In previous videos, we had the chance to see examples of ions that can act as acids or bases. For example, we've seen the ammonium ion in an ionization equation acting as an acid to produce ammonia and hydronium ions. The ammonium ion was therefore an acidic cation. We've also seen examples where the hypochlorite ion had an ionization equation with water to produce hypochlorous acid and the hydroxide ion. In this case, the OCl minus, the hypochlorite ion, was a basic anion. It's important to remember that ions do not exist by themselves. Instead, they'll be paired with a counter ion to form a salt or an ionic compound. In this video, we will identify cations and anions in salt solutions and then determine if the solution will be acidic, basic, or neutral based on the ions present. But the first step to do this is to separate the salt into its cation and anion components. You might want to recall some of the common polyatomic ions that you learned in previous courses. Cations will either have no effect on solution pH or they will make solutions acidic by acting as weak acids. Cations will never cause solutions to become more basic. When we look at cations in this way, there are three different types of cations. In the first one, we can think of counter ions of strong bases. For example, the sodium ion, which is the counter ion to the hydroxide ion in sodium hydroxide, or the calcium ion from calcium hydroxide. Cations that are counter ions of strong bases have no effect on solution pH. The second type of cations are cations that are conjugate acids of weak bases. For example, the ammonium ion, NH4, is the conjugate acid of the weak base, ammonia, NH3. Cations that are conjugate acids of weak bases will act as weak acids to make solutions acidic. Generally, these type of cations will have the formula BH+, and they'll react based on the general ionization equation, aqueous BH plus plus liquid H2O will be in equilibrium with the weak base B and the hydronium ion H3O plus aqueous. The third type of cation are cations that are small and highly charged metals. When we say they're highly charged, that means they'll have a 2 plus or a 3 plus charge. Examples of these kinds of cations would be the aluminum 3 plus ion, or the iron 2 plus ion. These small, highly charged metal cations will make solutions acidic. Anions will either have no effect on solution pH or they will make solutions basic by acting as weak bases. Anions will never cause a solution to be acidic. There are two different kinds of anions that you should focus on. There are anions that are conjugate bases of strong acids and these have no effect on solution pH. These would be called neutral anions. For example, the nitrate ion, NO3-, is the conjugate base of nitric acid, HNO3. We know that nitric acid is a strong acid, so that means that the nitrate ion is a neutral anion. Another kind of anion are those that are conjugate bases of weak acids. These types of anions make solutions basic by acting as weak bases. For example, the nitrite ion, NO2 minus, is the conjugate base of nitrous acid, HNO2. You should recall that nitrous acid is a weak acid. Since the nitrite ion is a conjugate base of a weak acid, the nitrite will be a basic anion and it will cause solutions to be more basic. In this problem, we're asked to look at two different salt solutions and to determine if the solutions will be acidic, basic, or neutral based on the ions present in each solution. In order to do this, you might want to follow this flowchart or decision tree to help you through this process. In essence, the first thing you'll do is to separate the salt solution into its ions and then for the cation, you'll decide what type of ion it is, and then you'll do the same process for the anion. Let's look at the first example, sodium hypochlorite NaOCl-. The first step is to separate the salt into its ions. 
So we would separate the sodium ion from the hypochlorite ion, and that's OCl minus. Now let's examine the two ions. For the cation, we know that it will either have no effect or cause the solution to be acidic. In this case, the cation is a sodium ion, and we recall that the sodium ion is the counter ion in sodium hydroxide, which is a strong base. Therefore, the sodium ion will have no effect on the solution pH. Now let's look at the anion, the hypochlorite ion, OCl minus. Which type of anion is this? If we added an H to the hypochlorite, we would have HOCl. HOCl, or hypochlorous acid, is not a strong acid. That means that the hypochlorite ion is a conjugate base of a weak acid, and therefore the hypochlorite ion will make a solution more basic. When we combine these two ions, we see that the sodium has no effect, but the hypochlorite ion makes a solution more basic. So overall, a solution of sodium hypochlorite will be basic. Now let's look at the second salt, iron 3 chloride. If we were to separate this salt into its ions, we would get the iron 3 plus ion and three chloride ions. When we look at the iron ion, we see that it is a small, highly charged cation, and therefore the iron 3 plus will make the solution acidic. In the case of the chloride ion, if we were to add a hydrogen, we would have HCl, hydrochloric acid. We know that hydrochloric acid is a strong acid, so that means chloride is a conjugate base of a strong acid, and therefore the chloride will have no effect on the solution pH. So overall, the cation makes a solution acidic, and the chloride has no effect, so therefore a solution of iron 3 chloride will be slightly acidic. By now, you should be able to identify the cations and anions in a salt solution. You should then be able to determine if the cations make solutions acidic or have no effect. You should also be able to determine if anions make solutions basic or have no effect. Finally, you should be able to use what you know about cations and anions to determine if a particular salt solution will be acidic, basic, or neutral.